Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here, coming to you from beautiful, sunny, steamy southern New Jersey today. We're working at my friend's shop on his 1973 Plymouth Cuda. He took this car on the Hot Rod Power Tour recently, had a few issues with the mild overheating and especially with vapor locking. With the ethanol containing fuel nowadays, that is a very common problem. So we're going to see if we can't address it. I'm going to let you know what I think caused the problem and see if we can't fix it with some beautiful products from my friends at Wizard Cooling Performance Radiators. So let's check it out. So let's go ahead and discuss what I think is wrong with the scenario, what's happening here and causing these problems, and then we'll discuss what we're gonna to do to fix those problems. Now I've already stated that one of the things I think is wrong here is the ethanol content in fuel. A lot of gasoline nowadays, most places you get it, is gonna contain upwards of 10% ethanol versus gasoline. So that is gonna create a hotter combustion chamber and it also boils at a lower temperature. If you add that into a classic vehicle like this that doesn't have a return fuel system like modern EFI cars do or variable fuel pumps like a lot of cars do, this has fuel bowls that can soak up that heat. As it fits on top of the intake manifold there, heat rises and comes right up into that carburetor and soaks into it, causing that vapor lock issue to be exacerbated by the heat being directly put into the carburetor. Talking about the carburetor on the engine is a good segue to talking about the engine itself. The engine in this car is the second problem I see with this. This is a hotter motor. By that, I mean it is a higher performance motor. He's got a 360 Mopar in this, a newer engine that has Edelbrock cylinder heads, comp cams, camshaft, Edelbrock intake manifold, Holley carburetor, long tube headers. That more horsepower means more heat being generated means that this needs to be cooled off better by the cooling system. Now, since that cooling system needs to keep up, here's our third issue on this car. The cooling system on this car is not quite configured properly for what's going on here. The radiator in this car is a budget-minded radiator. It was an affordable eBay radiator that bolted into the car and was supposedly for this car, but didn't allow the original fan shroud to be installed on it. When you don't have a fan shroud, that fan can kind of pull in air and just whip air up inside of the engine bay. The fan shroud helps to direct the vacuum at the fan creates to pull the air through the core of the radiator and do its job to properly cool the system off. Now, along with the cooling system not just keeping up with the engine, we also have AC on this car. I installed a vintage air AC system. You can check out a video about it up here. That AC system adds more heat to the scenario because it's got that AC condenser in front of the radiator heating up and restricting airflow. That fan has to work harder. That cooling system has to work harder to keep up with things. He was finding when he was on the power tour running this car, the cooling system would do okay just running down the road. But if you turned on the AC, the temps would spike right away. It put more of a load on the engine. It had that heat in front of the radiator. It just wasn't keeping up. It couldn't run the AC while he was on the power tour. Okay, so now we've covered the items that I think are causing problems here, the potential issues we have on this car. Let's discuss what we're gonna do to fix the issues on here. So now he's already done one thing I suggested on this car ahead of my arrival. He installed a spacer between the intake manifold and the carburetor, a phenolic one, which will act as an insulator to the carburetor so less heat is transferred into the carburetor directly. Now the absolute biggest thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna upgrade the cooling system on this car. The folks at Wizard Cooling reached out to me about doing a video and I was excited to work with them. I've been using their products in cars and projects that I've been building for years now. There are three projects at my day job at A-Class Act Auto right now that have Wizard Cooling radiators in them. So let's go ahead and get this old radiator out of here and then we'll talk about the new one that's going in. This should be pretty quick. So let's go ahead and talk about the radiator. It's actually gonna go in this car, cool this thing down. Now the radiator we're installing in this car is the 26 inch wide version and also has the ports on it ready to go for the small block engine that is in this thing. It is hand TIG welded. There is no epoxy glued together nonsense here that you have to worry about those popping apart. These are welded together and pressure tested units. The unit we're installing here has a removable fan shroud on it. The removable fan shroud means that you can service the radiator, you can service the fans without having to fully remove this combination if you so choose. That has twin spall fans on it. Those are spall 12 inch fans pushing a little over 1300 CFM each. That means we're close to 2700 CFM coming out of this radiator fan combination for moving a lot of air. Now Wizard Cooling prides themselves on making bolt-in radiators. Their radiators are meant to be 
quick, easy change out setups for you. You shouldn't have to worry about custom modifying, cutting, hacking, doing anything crazy to install one of their radiators. I highly recommend talking to the folks at Wizard Cooling, talking through the situation you're working with, what engine combination you have, how much room you have in front of your motor for the different fan and radiator combinations that they have. They have a lot of options, and if they don't see what you need on their website, call them anyway. They custom build radiators all the time for your situations. Let's go ahead and drop this radiator in here. Now you can see here, installing this radiator was very straightforward. It was literally a drop-in design. Because it has slots in the bottom of this mounting flange, this will actually drop right down in there, set on the bolts that were there already in the core support, and I can just install the upper bolts. I had to fight a little bit, get the bolts angled and such. That was nothing to do with the radiator, it's just a matter of getting the slots lined up because of the weight of the radiator. A little bit of trouble on my part, nothing to do with a poor design by any means. It bolted in no problem once I got everything lined up. The only modification I had to make on the setup for this new radiator is I did have to rebend the transmission cooler lines a little bit. The problem we had here was just the fact that the radiator was a little bit thicker because it's a better radiator than the previous one he had in there. That meant that it pushed the ports a little bit closer to the engine. So I just had to re-bend the lines a little bit to get them lined up where they needed to be. Now, as I said, this is running Spall fans. So Wizard Cooling sent over Spall wiring kits to go with those fans. They sent over one of the temp switches to install into the intake manifold. That goes right into the cooling passage so it gets good, accurate reading. That switch will kick the fans on at 185 degrees and off at about 165. Along with the wiring setup came these waterproof relay setups. It came with the sockets, the relays. They are beautiful combinations. So I installed those on the inner fender close to the alternator and the starter so I can go ahead and jump past Power from a good heavy power source for these fans. One note I should make when you're installing a combination like this, you need to make sure that your charging system and your wiring are up to snuff to keep up with those fans with the demands that they're going to place on your system. Along with this also, we got a Vintage Air trinary switch. Since we have AC on this car, a trinary switch will allow the AC to actuate the fans as well. All I had to do was wire that to the ground of the relays so that that has the potential to trip on the relays and turn on the fans when the AC demands. It's a hot and humid day today. It's in the mid 80s in Southern Jersey and it is very humid. So let's hit the road, see how this thing cools with those fans, with that new radiator system. Let's check it out. All right, we got this thing hot. We ran it down the road as you saw. Let's see what this thing is actually doing. When he's running the hot rod power torque, all he had was the original dash gauge. He didn't have a secondary gauge to tell him what temperatures he was running. So I don't have exact before numbers for you, but what I can tell you, on that original dash gauge, he was running about here on that gauge, on the high end of temperature. That's not a dummy gauge. This is a real gauge. It just doesn't have numbers to tell you temperature. Taking a look at the mechanical gauge that he put in, a secondary mechanical gauge just for this testing purpose to keep an eye on it, this gauge tells us the real story. The fans kick on about 185, and you can see here now it's sped up, but this is cooling it down, sitting still, the, both of those fans running, engine idling on an over 80 degree day, this thing is coming down. It's taking this amount of time to reach 160. Now that is a beautiful thing in my eyes. That means that when he's running down the road, going to a car show, sitting in traffic here in South Jersey, he's not gonna have to worry about overheating this thing just sitting there pulling off, shutting it down, letting it cool off, none of those issues now. Thank you very much to the folks at Wizard Cooling. I highly recommend checking them out. There'll be links in the description so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. They have a ton of options for a ton of makes and models. This car has a bunch of options with itself, a smaller radiator, this larger size radiator. You could still run the mechanical fan with a mechanical fan shroud. They have the electric fans. They have bigger electric fans, smaller electric fans. They have a lot of combinations. Like I said, give them a ring, see what they can do for you. If you don't see your car combination on their website, reach out to them. They can still work with you on building something custom or working with your situation. One final word, just a quick disclaimer. The folks at Wizard Cooling did provide this radiator for this project, but this was not a sponsored video. They didn't pay for my opinion or anything like that. 
This is straight up, I mean, this isn't even my car, but the radiator went into. Go ahead and drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this product, this project, this car? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Go ahead and check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hot rod hippie. That directly supports this channel, helps me produce these videos for you folks. I got a lot of travel time, all that involved in videos like this one. It's really helpful. Share the videos, it really helps out. Go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with all the content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.